as for Judy, that she is the father of God in my heart, that my heart to be perfect. I swear to be able to do what you're doing in our midst for the rest of the service in the name of Jesus. And I ask for Judy that she is the father of God in my heart, that my heart to be perfect. Pray for you for yourself. There's nothing I have to give you today. There's nothing that I have. But God has a lot to give you this morning. And it's so important that what God needs to say today comes to you clearly. Ah, Father Lord, I yield to you. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. I Amen. want to wish everybody a happy new year. I want to thank God for bringing us to a new year, 2021. Amen. Which we win, no matter what the enemy does. We win in this year, in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. And um, I want to thank the church. Honestly, I am still unpacking. And I'm, I'm literally, I'm still unpacking the gifts that you gave, you gave me. I'm literally still unpack, unpacking it, unpacking them. You know, so I just want to thank every one of you. And let you know, I deeply, deeply appreciate it. I'm not taking it for granted. Not now, not ever. Thank you. What, your sweat, it's, your, it's, it's, it's what you have used to do some other things. You know, I just thank God for you, and I'm asking that God will continue to bless you, continue to lift you up, continue to take you to where He, God only, can take you to. In Amen. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So I send I send greetings from my family in the UK. Uh, I, I want to just, uh, I, I guess they're excited. Well, they're ex excited to to hear what God is doing here, and I pray that. Um, as God allow, allows us, we'll have more interactions. Amen. So, you. Welcome to 2021. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brethren, the things that I want to share today are perhaps at this moment, it's the deepest thing in my heart. I want to please listen because it is something that God will have to open our hearts to. Amen. Can we say something? Yes, sir. Can you hear me clearly too? Yes. yes, Pastor. Okay. Thank you very much. So, the TCC reset. Honestly, from this moment onward, this is perhaps one of the most important things that you're going to hear from me. Because this is what the Lord God has been speaking to me throughout 2020 about where the church is going, the church being the church worldwide, and where TCC must begin to position itself. And this is very, very important. And my prayer is that God would open your hearts to receive the truth in this. Yet on things you are going to hear that you might not necessarily agree with, but I want you to open your heart to see the possibilities, to see the possibility, possibility of what God is about to do all over the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. I titled this The Comforter Center Research, The Imaging Church. I know we have heard about this pandemic or the pandemic, or what perhaps they have called the pandemic. Whatever pandemic that you have heard, what I want to, what surprises me about all this, all of this is that though the prophetic voices in the world are plenty, not very many saw the plague that engulfed the world in 2020. We had lots of great prophecies before 2020, but I personally did not hear, because I, I do try to keep my eyes, my ears uh, uh, down to hear what, what prophetically what the Lord God is saying. But none that I heard, none that I saw actually explained or hinted as to the kind and the magnitude of 
plague that, that engulfed the world in 2020. The word says, the secret things belong to the Lord, our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us. Tell me 29, 29. And so the question is, why did God not reveal this pandemic or the pandemic or the pandemic to us, to us who he should reveal it to? Well, I'll tell you, I've come to know that when God wants to take all the glory, he restricts the hands of, of man. What is the glory in all of this? What is the glory in the pandemic? What's the glory in all the things that happened in 2020? Well, let's start from the beginning. At the start of this pandemic or pandemic or pandemic, the Lord spoke to us and he was talking about a restart. When we started getting to the lockdown, I heard the Lord say that I'm about to restart everything. I'm about to make all things new. And I was wondering, what exactly is this? Isaiah 43, verse 19 says, from about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. God is already doing something new. He has begun. The question is, do you see it? Do I see it? Like in the days of Noah, I hear, I, I, I hear God say he wants to restart the world again. He wants to restart the world again, but specifically the church, the, 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 the church that is in the world, the, 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 the church of God upon the earth. He wants to do a restart. And when we heard that word, the, re, the restart, I was wondering uh, uh, what is going on. And so I shared... I shared the, this revelation with us in one of the, uh, the meetings that we had. And our sister, sister Anita, came up with a phrase that I felt was exactly what was needed. She said, reset. And from that point on, onward, I picked on the word because it was, it, it, was, it, was, it was really, it was apt. It was exactly what it was, a reset. As an IT man, I know what a reset is. I know that when things get tough, as an electronic engineer, I also know that when you try and try and try with an equip equipment and nothing works, yeah, there's one thing that almost always works, a reset. When you press the on-off button and reset the e equipment, when it, when it boosts back, it will have pointed out everything that was in the memory that was causing the problem on that equipment. So when she said reset, say yeah, that is the word. That is the word I heard the Lord say, say, say to me. Or rather, that is a, the meaning. I, I really grabbed that. A reset. A reset. So you can imagine, I mean, this was February, March of 2020. So when we heard the globalists come up later in the year and say, oh, the great reset, the great reset, we just laughed. God has been speaking since, since the beginning of the year about the reset, right? But the key thing you and I need to understand is this. The sons of Belial have decided to reset the globe. But the resetting of the globe is not their idea. It did not come from them. There were only people who God knew he could use to bring to pass what is in his heart for the world, but most importantly, for the church, because he's coming soon. It is important to, to, to our, our father that we be ready because his return is imminent. But you know, you and I, I mean, this is the truth. If the offense you, sorry. But we, the Christians, are the slowest to catch on. If the job of this great reset was put in our hands, we who are believers of, of the gospel, it will, it will maybe it will take us 10 years for us to get here. 
But these sons of, of, of Belial, these, these people who walk darkness, they know how to fast forward things. And God used them, put them in, in, in the place of bringing up, bringing to pass his own setup. So when we begin to see these things happen, do not be moved. Do not be moved. The God, your father, is in control. He's the one who has stirred them up to walk into his plans for the world, for, for the church. For the Lord return is imminent. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the new move, the, this church has to walk in the supernatural. Because where we are as a church today is not what, where the place God intended for us to be. So God had to forcefully use a pandemic, a pandemic or a pandemic to move us to where he wants us to be. That is sobering. It's hard to take a kick for us to know that we should up our game spiritually. It has to take a kick from the sons of darkness to make us begin to pray the way we ought to pray. To make us begin to see the work of evangelism the way we ought to see it. It took a pandemic, a pandemic, a pandemic to bring us to the place of expecting the Savior to return, to begin to prepare again because we were sleeping. And brethren, in the new moon that the church is getting into, you, there, is, there is no room for complacency. If you, if you become complacent, you will drown. I'm telling you the truth. If you become complacent, you'll be swept over. The, the emerging church is the church that will work in the supernatural. So there's no place to say, oh, we're using the church to, as a covering. You are coming to church for fame. You're coming to church, you know, to, to advance your business or your plan or your goal. Mm -hmm. Then if you, if you do that in the church that is about to emerge, you will drown. That will be your portion in Jesus Christ's name. In another Amen. Word, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. But the time has come that the church will begin to work in the supernatural. There's nothing the enemy can do about it. That is where we need to go. That is where you need to be prepared to, get to, 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 to go to. So people are doing their best. Even believers are doing their best to try to go back to the normal, to how we used to be. But brethren, I have bad news for, for you. I have bad news for you. We will never go back to the normal that you know. The normal you are used to, we will never go back to that normal. Things have changed. There has been a reset from your father, the almighty. They think they are the ones doing it. No, no, no. They have no idea. I mean, you've heard them. One thing you will, know, you will notice in the narrative of, 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 of this globalist is that they are, they are using words to change the way life is. If you watch the interviews from one interview to the other, to another interview, they say the same thing. We will never return back to normal. Some will add, unless you have the vaccine. They have redefined everything. They have redefined, they have redefined uh, 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 the way you shop. They have redefined the way you 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 exercise, they have redefined the way you worship. They are redefining everything. They are trying to move us, change our mindset. They are putting vocabularies in our head that will change our thinking and change our res responses from now forward. But child of God, what do you know? This is your father's plan. How do you re respond? Christ himself said that you can't put a new wine in old wine skin. Otherwise, the new wine will bust the old white wine, 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 wine skin. And brethren, that is what we, have, we are still trying to do as the church of God. Things have moved on, but the church is holding back, holding back to the old ways. We are trying to go back to the time where we all gather again. We all do the same thing. God has moved. Will you move with him? There is a new order upon us. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, there's a new order upon us. 
And, and these guys are not the ones. The, the globalists are not the ones in charge. Your father is in charge. My father is in charge. Amen. How should we respond to our father? It's what we as a church need to see, need to embrace. You know, we are bothered at this point about the vaccine. We are praying about the vaccine. I had to tell, tell us recently in the prayer group, I said, listen, I just feel that we should pray less about this, this, these things and begin to build ourselves the more. No matter how they come, no matter where they come, no matter what angle they come, they come from, if we are strong, that's all we need. If we are strong, that's all we need. If we, have, if we are revived, better revival, that's all we need. Whatever they throw at us, it will bounce back. Amen. Amen. So, the question I want to ask, I've asked it before, but I want to ask it again, and that is, if your loving Heavenly Father is the architect and the planner of the Great Reset, because that is what the economic forum and all the leaders have been talking about the great reset, the great reset. But if your father is the architect and planner of the great reset, do you lose sleep over, over, over it? Should you, should you be, begin to, to, to tremble and, and shake because they, they, they have coined a phrase? My answer is no for, my, for, for myself. My father is in charge. My father is in charge and things have changed for the better. Amen. Amen. Now we need to look at changing, knowing the times and the seasons. That, that is key at this point. If we're still holding on to the past and the season has left us, the times have changed, then we will become ineffective in the work the Father has called us to. At this point, I would like the 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 host, so please let me know how much time I have left. Send me a text me me message, please. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. In the times and the seasons, reaction is not enough. Revelation is what is needed. Reaction is not enough. Revelation is what is needed. All we need to know is the mind of God concerning this research. That is all we need to know. If we understand what God is doing, what God has done, or what his intentions are, what his plan is, then we know what to do. Then we know how to fulfill our purpose here on earth. Praise God. Matthew 16, two, verse, verse 2 and 3. Matthew 16, verse 2 and 3 says, Christ replied, you know the you know the saying, red sky at night means fair weather tomorrow. Red sky in the morning means foul weather all, all, all day. You know how to interpret the weather signs in the sky, but you don't know how to interpret the signs of the time. This was Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago speaking to his disciples and people of his time. And this word is so, it's so, it's so current to you and I. We can predict this, predict stock, predict that, but we cannot predict, we cannot interpret the signs of the times. We keep talking about the sons of Issachar. They knew the times. In 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32, a translation renders that scripture like this. It, 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 it's actually more verbose than this. I just broke it down. It's, and the sons of Issachar, who had understanding to know the times and were skilled in fixing the beginning of years, the commencement of months, and the intercalations of months and years, wow. might show Israel what to do. And their teachers were 200 chiefs of the Sardinian, and all their brethren excelled in the words of the law and were endued, endowed with wisdom and were obedient to their command. Daddy. Of the Lord. We quote the, 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 the sons of Issachar a lot, but look at what, who, what these people were astrologers. There were people who, who, who studied. They, studied, they studied the times and they knew what's going on at every point in time. What are we doing, brethren? 
when the when the weather changes, when the times change, when seasons change, when events change, when current affairs become no longer co current, what do we do? Do we re react or do we seek revelation? So observing all the negative global impacts of COVID-19, I asked the Lord, why is this reset necess necessary? Because he told me he's the one in charge. I said, okay, so, but why is it necessary? I mean, like, there's so much going on. And then he decided to open my, 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 heart, my mind. And I was amazed. The first thing is this. Is that the church of God has become obese. We have become overweight. And we can, we can no longer move at the required pace the Lord God wants us to move. We have become so big, so complacent, so relaxed, and we're just gathering and gathering and gathering and gathering and becoming bloated. But we're not doing commensurate with what we, we, we actually are gathering. So we become obese. The church of God is suffering from obesity. That is why there was a need for a reset. The other thing he told me is that the church had become empires and not umpires. An umpire is somebody, let me give an example in, in sports. An umpire in sports is somebody who stands there and makes sure that everybody follows the rules and regulations of the game. A referee. An umpire is neither for team A or team B. An umpire is just there to make sure that things are fair and things are right and things are going the way they should go. But the church has moved from being an, um, an umpire of the truth and we have become empires here on earth. And then we use wonderful scriptures. If it's not good, it is God. If it's wonderful phrases. If it's, if it's, not, if it, if it's not good, it's not, it's, not, it's not God. My God is not a poor God, you know? And all kinds of funny things that we will be saying to justify our gathering and our and, 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 and our 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 gluttony and our and our greed. And the problem I see being a, a pastor in a small church or a, a young church. We, we are not small, please. We are not a small church. We are just a young church that is going towards its, its goal. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so let's, let's think like a big church, okay? Amen. But we, so for, for, for me as a young church, one of the things I notice is that we get carried away because we have no, we don't have good model to start from. So a young pastor just starting a church who want to have a, a, a world-class uh, uh, audio, audiovisual uh, uh, set, setup, uh, uh, you know? It just starting up, we want to have a world class music system. You know, we want to have a world class. This, when you are just three people, five people, ten people in the church, why? Because the people who are who have built empires are our models, and all we see is that we want to be like them. Oh, if 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 we're not like, like them, people won't come to our our churches, and that's actually the, the truth, really. People will rather go and sit in a church of 5,000 or 1,000 where there's going to be bench warmers than go to a church of 10 or 12 where they can be workers and, 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 and you know, workers in God's vineyard. No, 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 no. They don't want to go there. Uh, now, 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 me to make of our head for. I, I should want to go and start and do all the donkey jobs. No, 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 no. I'm going to church that is already made because I'll get help there anyway. Brethren, we are building empires and not empires. Here, R.W. Schambach, somebody many of you might not know. R.W. Schambach was a, was, was, was a, a preacher. <laughs> if you know him, he's a... He, a blunt man, if had fire in his bones, it was one who said, "This gospel is for everybody. You don't to shortcut the thing." What, what, what I down? That's been the trouble with the church. You preach it like it is and let it cut down where it may. God didn't call us to change that book. 
he called us to preach it. Amen. How many of the churches are doing that today? Uh -oh. We are building empires, not um, 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 uh, um, empires. One of the big things about the church currently, that the Lord told me, this, this, this is like, 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 like the first, the first thing the Lord told me, is that we are both down with liabilities and we have moved from the gospel to trading. The picture you are seeing is a church. Can you, can you see the church? Yes, Pastor. The church is complete glass from head to toe, glass. When the founder of the church died, the church went into bankruptcy. Wow. Why? They couldn't maintain the glass house. And this is where the church has, has gone to. Okay, so this is the key one that the Lord God brought to my heart. He said we have moved from the original model in the act of the of apostles. The model we have today is not God's model. The mega churches and the way even the small churches have run themselves is not God's model at all. The model of the church can be found in the, in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And that church was a church that was slim and effective. Slim and effective. Compare the, the, the churches that we have. Slim and effective and obeys and slow. When God told them to move, they moved. When things had to, if, if a church had to move, they moved. They didn't have to think of, oh, mortgage. Think about, oh, how do we move equipment? Oh, how do we dismantle that? Oh, how do we change this? How do we, they, God says move. They packed their things and they went in obedience to God. But what have we become as a church? We become slow. Uh, before God says, ah, no, it, it can't be God. How, how can God allow me to build all these estates? I have this mortgage. Build this, have, this, have this influence in this town. In this city, in this, in this nation. No, 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 no. That's the devil. We have moved from the original model. And what God is asking us to do, as a people, is to go back to the original model. And I believe the one that, 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 that most likely will grieve God the most is that evangelism has become non existent. But the end has come, the end is near. That's why in Matthew 24, 14, Matthew 24, 14, the Bible says, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. And what will happen? And then the end will come. Brethren, has the good news been preached to all the nations? Has, all, has everybody heard the, 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 the good news? In our mansions, in our empires, where we sit down and we remain, where we don't go out, we don't evangelize, because listen, listen, people will come. Our praise and worship is like is, 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 is like Motown or American Musical Awards. We make sure we make it that way. We polish our our ushers, we our sermons do not, you know, grip anybody. They are they are sugar coated, they are, you know, they are uh, you, they, So we have no need to evangelize. We have no need to move, to go and seek the, the lost. What we are doing is just exchanging believers from church to church. You know, we're just doing the, what do you call that? Children, children do. They play around uh, moving, moving chairs. But the Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all regions will hear it and then the end will come. Where are we currently in this situation? Brethren, I have a lot to, to say, but I want you to understand where we have missed it as a body of Christ. And so we can see where God is calling us to. I knew I won't be able to finish this sermon this today, because as I, I God tried to speak a lot of things into my mind, a lot. I, I was my my heart was almost blowing up this morning, as God was just you know, downloading certain things to me and challenging me even the more. I thought I was challenged to give a word like this, 
But by this morning, I was so challenged. I was, I, I felt it was me who needed the word. Where are we currently? If we must, if for nothing else, but for evangelism, as a church, we know that we have two major mandates. As the mandate of God Almighty, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and love your neighbors yourself. Love is our first mandate. The next one is evangelism. How can we evangelize the world if all we do is sit in our own empires? How can we love the, the unloved if we remain in our, the four walls in one location, in one place at one time? That is the challenge the Lord God is staring us up up to. And that is the challenge I want to put in your heart today, the Comforter Center. We need, things have changed and we need to change. We need to move from where we are to where God wants us to be. We will pick this up next Sunday by God's grace. But what I'm hoping that you will, you will, you, you will receive is that there's, there's a place God is taking you to I'm taking this church to, so that you will be more effective. Amen. God will not come and catch us on the ways. So also, that you also know that what is going on, you, you don't need to be scared about what is going on. The one who is in charge is your father. Amen. He knows how to protect you. He knows how to keep you covered. He knows how to take you from where you are to where he wants you to be. And I tell you, any evildoer, any wicked man will be punished. Amen. Nobody, nobody escapes the judgment of God. For every evil you are seeing upon the land, these men and women will pay. That is how our God is. He's a just God. He's a loving God. His love is what makes him reveal what, 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 what we are hearing this morning. But his justice is also why those who will not listen and those who are who are at the, at, who, who do evil will be brought to book. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I want us to pray. There's more to come, brethren. There's more to come. But at this point, I want us to pray. I want us to pray and trust God to take us from where we are to where we need to be. And we'll elaborate on that as time. Goes on. So I want to call on my brother, brother Emmanuel, to please lead us in prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I think, uh, we just pray, and uh, I just want us to start with um, what our sister mentioned while she was sharing a testimony. Um, she mentioned about a chicken or something and um, one thing about chicken is that um, it's like they don't have hand let me say their leg what we know as their hand we don't know maybe it is it is hand or leg but they use it in working right mm -hmm. and she, she also mentioned something that uh, what she saw I'm not really talking about that now because she, she shared it. It's possible that it's something, it's an experience that someone else is going through too. So we we'll just want to pray for ourselves with that. And then she mentioned that the thing came out from the hand, the hand. And like I mentioned, a chicken as it were, they only have a leg. And what they do with the leg is that they scatter. So it now coming from the hand now, we know what we will do with feel that that is significant and every, every every spirit that scatters labor that we're just laboring but the, the pain is just scattering just scattering scattering i want us to pray that there will be an end unto them in our lives in the name of jesus that the labors of our family the toys and the labor that are sweats that those spirits that scatter them because one thing is this even god knows the benefit of scattering in the book of Genesis, when these people, they were doing things, what did God do? God did not do any special thing. He just scattered them. 
He said, because as long as they remain scattered, there is nothing they can achieve. And I want us to pray that the Lord will help us even in this land in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit that scatters in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even as we have come into this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I declare that, Lord, every oppression of scattering spirits over my life, over my family, I come against them in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against them in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, Father, we declare that by your mercy, Lord, that we will stand in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, that your hands go with be upon us, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. I read from the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. True faith, they subdue kingdoms. And I want us to declare over 2021 that Father, I subdue kingdoms in the name of Jesus. In this year 2021, my family and myself, we subdue kingdoms in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's lift up our voices even as we declare Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, over this year 2021, I declare, I subdue kingdoms in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I subdue kingdoms. Every kingdom of darkness, Father, I subdue them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, every kingdom of men that we want to move again Against me, Father, we subdue in the name of Jesus. I subdue them in victory in the mighty name of Jesus. I subdue them in victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I continue reading from Hebrews 11 33. The works righteousness and obtain promises. And I want us to declare that over this year, 2021, I obtain promises. The promises of God will not fail over my life, over my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let not your promises for my life fail. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let not your promises for my family fail. In this year, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare, Lord God, that your plans for my life in this year will not fail. Your promises for my destiny will not fail. Your promises for my family in this year will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Father, I declare, I hope them promises. I hope them promises. In the name of Jesus. I hope them promises. I hope them promises. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. The first king of Israel had a promise that he would be king, but it wasn't long that God said that, no, you will no longer be king. The promises of God over his life, it failed. It failed, even though there was a promise. So having a promise is one thing, but the promise that one has is not something that is, is not like a, a, a perpetual guarantee. It's not a perpetual guarantee, and we will be praying that, Lord, let not your promises, your plan for my life, let it not fail. In the name of Jesus, your promises for me will not fail. In this year, Lord, your plans for me will not be changed. In the name of Jesus, right? Father, I declare, I obtain promises. I obtain promises. The promises of God, the promises of men, I obtain in the name of Jesus, right? Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that your promises, Lord, for my life will not fail. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, that you will have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Stop the mouth of lions. And I want us to declare that, Father, in this year, 2021, we stop every, every roaring lion. Looking, Man. going about, looking for whom to devour. Father, I declare, I stop their mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Every lion, whatsoever the lions of truth represent, that eats people in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we stop the mouth of lions. We stop the mouth of lions, even in this year. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right? Father, we declare that in this year, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right? In the name of Jesus, right? Father, we declare that the mouths of the lion they are stopped. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I read from the book of Numbers, chapter thirty-one, verse forty-nine. Numbers 29, uh, 31, sorry. Uh, I think I, I might have made that up. It's not actually where I was looking for. Numbers 31, in any case. What I was looking for was the place where the soldiers, they counted. When they counted, after they crossed over, they counted, and then they came back to report to David and to um, Moses. And the Bible says something that after they have counted, when the soldiers counted, they said that none was missing. Amen. None was missing. After they've counted, they've crossed over, and they are now, because we, we all know um, the situation that the world is with COVID-19, people are dying. And he said, he said that for them, they had their own issues too. But he said that when they counted, they came back to report that none was missing. And I want us to declare regarding ourselves and our family over this 2021, that Father Lord, that by the time we will come to December, Lord, none will be missing in my house. In the name of Jesus Christ, nothing broken, nothing missing. Nothing destroyed, nothing cancelled, nothing stolen. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's declare it over ourselves and over our families. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let us to Satan. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we declare. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, I declare. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I declare that over my father. Family. None will be missing. None will be missing. None will be missing. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name, we are praying. The scripture I was looking for was actually correct. It's number 3149. You know, the way this King James they write their things, so that one was confusing me. So it's actually the same thing, it's number 31, verse 49. That none was missing. Praise the Lord. And I want us to pray that Father, because it is not too early to begin to testify in 2021. And I want us to declare that Father, the testimonies of January, I call them forth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The testimonies for my life in this January 2021, I speak them into existence. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare, Lord God, because it is not ready to begin to testify of I declare the testimonies of January. I speak them in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare. January to release. Let's command January to release our blessings in the name of Jesus. In 2021, we speak unto God. Release your goodness unto us. Release your blessings unto us. In the name of Jesus. Father, we the name of Jesus Christ. Please make your head join the gate. Manifest by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every gate of January be lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every gate that is withholding 
We command you to be lifted up in the name of Jesus, right? Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, in the mighty name of Jesus, right? Father, we declare, Lord, that your blessing is upon us in the mighty name of Jesus, right? Father, Lord, have your way in the mighty name of Jesus, right? Thank you, Father. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him praise. Father, we thank you. We thank you for answer prayers. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So brethren, we have uh, one more prayer point or so. I want us to know that where we are going as, as a church is a place in which every one of you, everyone who desires to be a pastor, you will be a head of a unit. You'll be given a chance to exhibit your gifts, your spiritual gifts, your spiritual ab ab abilities. It won't be a one-man show. It will be you expressing the, 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 the spiritual gifts and abilities that you have. That's where the Lord God is taking the church to. And I want you to pray for yourself. Act, pray, God, prepare me for what you are about to do. Pray for yourself. God, prepare me for what you are about to do. But I revive me personally and prepare me for what is ahead. Let's begin to pray. The Bible says it's a tragedy for a, a woman who is pregnant to come to the place of pregnancy and cannot push. Pray that God will prepare you, Makaba, that way you win, win. God brings you to the place of opportunity that you will be ready. Let's, let's pray. Makarashika, Father, prepare us, Lord God. Walk in us, Almighty King of glory, Lord God. Touch our hearts. Revive us personally, King of glory, Lord God, and prepare us for your move. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let every single one be subject, Lord God, to the counsel of God. Let King of glory, Lord God, Makaba, everyone receive a revelation, King of glory, of the change and the transitions, King of glory, that you have brought upon the church. That Lord God will be ready, Lord God, to love the world, ready, King of glory, to evangelize the world. We'll be ready, Lord God, to welcome our King. Bring us, King of glory, Lord God, to operate beyond where we are, from the natural to the supernatural, that your name will be glorified, that your purpose in our lives individually will be done, and your purpose for our life as a church will come to pass. Mm -hmm. Though we, we were raised for a time like this. The Comforter Center was raised, was set up for a time like this. Mm -hmm. Lord God, may we not fail you. May we not fail you, King of glory, Lord God. May we perfect your purpose, Lord God. May we bring to pass your purpose for our lives individually, families, and as a church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Show us your message, King of Glory, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Just tie up over, over to you. Thank you, Isaac. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God that is speaking to us. And uh, we thank God for what He has done, the message we have heard, and so where is taking us to? Where is taking us to? So I want to.